Marcus Conti reporting on the drug epidemic in America. You heard? Fentanyl. Fentanyl pouring into the country. It's pouring through our borders. Pouring over the Mexican border. Fentanyl. A couple thousand pounds of heroin. Or synthetic heroin. Fentanyl, the facsimile of heroin. Busted coming across the border. And um, Purdue Farmer. You remember the story? Purdue Farmer offers 12 billion... Twelve, I almost said million. Twelve billion dollars to settle opioid lawsuit, says report. So let's have a look. We'll look at um, here's the uh, Purdue Pharma story. Uh, okay, so but nobody's going to jail, by the way, in Pur- Purdue Pharma. They're paying their way out. This is big pharma paying their way out of killing. I don't know, maybe a half a million people in America, maybe more people that die of op- opioid overdose, oxycotton. So. Purdue Pharma offers $12 billion to settle opioid lawsuit, says the report. Purdue Pharma, which manufactures oxycontin, has reportedly offered $12 billion to settle over 2,000 lawsuits filed against them, against the company. Purdue Pharma and its owners, the Sackler family, are offering to settle uh, the more than 2,000 uh, 2, lawsuits against the company for $12 billion, NBC reports. Uh, citing two fam- people familiar with the source. The lawsuit alleges the company, which manufactures Oxycontin, aggressively marketed the painkiller despite knowing it's addictive, while suggesting Purdue Pharma is partly responsible for sustaining the nation's opioid crises. <laughs> of course they are. Of course, it's legalized drug dealing. It's, they, took it, they took the drugs off the corner, and they gave it, they gave it to uh, Big Pharma. Uh, but no, we like, we like uh, this type of medical, you know, setup in America where pharmaceutical companies and doctors and, and hospitals, everybody's in competition for your money, right? Because that's really what it's about. Take the pill, get hooked on the pill, and give us your fucking money, right? That's what it's all about. But we don't care. We could have a nice, very simple, you know, uh, Medicare for all, but that's, oh, you know, that's communism. <laughs> At least uh, 10 state attorney generals, attorneys general, met with Purdue uh, Farmers attorneys in Cleveland on August 20th to discuss settling the lawsuit, NBC reported, while the Sackler family offered to settle for $10 billion to $12 billion. The Sackler is ranked by Forbes as the 19th richest in, the, in America, uh, would reportedly pay at least $3 billion of the settlement and give up ownership of the company. <laughs> I said, not even. They're, they're just get, they're walking away. They're rather than go to jail, they're taking the money that they that they stole and and polluted people for years and years. They're probably worth much more than three billion. Uh, so listen to how it works out. A billionaire, right? Already you could see the the, the writing on the wall. If the Sacklers have have amassed ten billion dollars in their life in their lives, right? And they have this company that's probably worth about the same. Right? But they have $12 billion, $10 billion, $20 billion in other assets outside of, the com- com- outside of the company. So what they do is they say they forfeit the company because they have no other choice. Right? They, the gun is to their head. So they forfeit the company. Eh, they, they cut a check for $3 billion, and they walk away with another $10 billion walking away. Right? Rather than going to jail where everybody else would go for selling drugs, the Sackler family will walk away with uh, still billions of dollars in their pocket. That's the reality of, that's the reality of monopoly and oligarchy. But you can keep, you can keep you know, wanting to believe that it's Mexicans jumping over the wall taking your jobs. It's fine. The opioid crisis has claimed the lives of half, of half a million people in the U.S. since 1999, according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Wow, half a million people they killed. They make seven. They make tens of billions of dollars, and and uh, kill a half a million people, and they're gonna walk away still billionaires. No problem. In this, no crime. In a statement of NBC News, the company said, "quote It's it sees little good coming from the years of wasteful litigation and appeals." Psh. Yeah, right. So they're just gonna take the money and run, as I said. The people and the communities affected by the opioid crisis need help now. Purdue believes a constructive global resolution is the best path forward. Now they're, now they're helping you. They killed a half a million people. Now they're helping you to, to, to get to a solution. 
And the company is actively working with the state attorney generals and plaintiffs to achieve this outcome. The report comes one day after Johnson & Johnson or was ordered to pay a half a billion in damages for its role in fueling Oklahoma's opioid epidemic. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's interesting, but it's, in my view, it's, it's the things that I just mentioned. It's, a little, it's too little too late, and you're letting these billionaires off the hook. In other news, Mexico, Mexican Navy seizes a whopping 52,000 pounds of fentanyl intended for the United States. Do you know how much fentanyl that is? A pound of 52,000 pounds of fentanyl. Do you know that like enough fentanyl the size of maybe your, your pinky, uh, uh, fentanyl powder on your pinky could kill you? That's how powerful it's a, fentanyl is about 32 times uh, more, uh, is concentrated heroin. It's con- first it goes from the opioid plant, right? It's the poppy plant. And then you, you take that and car- you, you harvest that and that's opium. And then from opium, it becomes a couple of more refinings down becomes heroin. And you go even further, refined heroin is then fentanyl, but fentanyl is also, there's also synthetic versions of, I believe fentanyl is completely synthetic, but it is a, uh, a, it's a derivative of the opiate. It's a synthetic derivative, maybe, I don't know, but it's 32 times more potent than heroin by, you know, by the pound or whatever. So it's a very powerful drug. That's the knockout drug that the, uh, the surgeons use. Say count backwards from 10. By the time you get to, to seven, you're, you don't even, you're unconscious. So that's, what ha- that's fentanyl. So Mexican Navy sees the whopping 52 pounds, 52,000 pounds of fentanyl intended for the U.S. I wonder what happens to the fentanyl now that they have it. I bet you it hits the market again. Almost 100%. According to a new report from Mexican newspaper, Tabasco, Ohio, the Mexican... <laughs> fucking newspaper called Tabasco... Tabasco sauce, the Mexican Navy, in, the, the Mexican Navy intercepted 2,551,000 uh, pounds of fentanyl at the port of Lazaro Cardenza, Cardenas, Cardenas. <laughs> Lard- you're supposed to practice the word before you say it. Lardanzo Cardenza, the largest Mexican seaport and one of the largest harbors in the Pacific Ocean. Wow. So it's on the Pacific side. The secretary, the secretary of the Navy said joint work uh, between the Navy units of the Port Protection and Naval 10th Naval Zone and Customs at the Port of Uncovered Illicit uncovered the uh, un- illicit drug in a 40-foot con- shipping container. The picture says it all. <laughs> there's the 40-foot there's the uh, commercial container going into Mexico, not going into the U.S. Commercial ships traveling in with that kind of shit uh, very rarely, if ever, get into the U.S. ports. And I know there's a lot of difference of opinion of that, but we don't have much evidence to suggest that that's how the drugs get in. But it's it's probably likely. But we do see. So they they actually tell us how how this heroin is going to hit the street or this fentanyl is going to hit the street. Just by opening that door, I can tell you if that stuff isn't securely wrapped, and there's fentanyl powder running flying around in that uh, in that uh, container. You stick your head in there, you breathe in, you'll probably die. That's how toxic that shit is if you touch it. The vessel was a, um, was, was a several hundred meter container uh, ship flying on a Danish flag. I don't know, it, says, it seems to say Maersk. Is Maersk Danish? I don't know. Uh, in which, according to the, the freight uh, manifest, the fentanyl was identified as calcium chloride, salt. So it came in as salt, but it was really fentanyl. Uh, Navy and port officials uh, completed a random search of the unnamed vessel, and when they carried out uh, specialized customs laboratory testing of the, quote, calcium chloride, it turned out to be fentanyl. Oh, wow. Total of gross weight. It's big. So the container ship came from Shanghai. Ah, China. Shanghai. Why are we sell your fentanyl? We, we fight you. We fight you financially. We have, we have trade war, and we give you fentanyl. 
<laughs> it's supply and demand. You know, you can't blame any. I don't blame anybody. I know people are running this thing that, that oh, Conti, you said um, you said in an art somewhere that that you don't frown on anybody who takes money to report fake news. This is a sidebar, but uh, I, I did, and then I caveated it. I remember saying it. What I did say was that I don't, just like I don't, I don't condemn per se. That's actually comes from a mobster movie that uh, we don't. The Godfather said he said he said I don't make it. I don't I don't pass judgment on what any man does for a living. Right? That's where it comes from. That was in the Godfather, you morons. Uh, but but the fact is that. I feel the same way that I don't I don't care what people do for a living, but there are consequences to that living. Right? There are consequences if you portray fake news. It's none of my business, but if I catch you doing it, I'm going to expose you. Right? That's the way. To, that's the way this works. Right? So I I don't. It's none of my business what people do for a living because it's not illegal. That's the point. If you want to make a law against perpetrating fake news, well, then kiss the, you know, kiss the Second Amendment, the, the First Amendment goodbye because then there is no freedom of speech. So just to clarify that. So if you want to keep challenging me on the fact that I said I don't have any opinion of people who take money to perpetrate fake stories like CNN and MSNBC and the rest of them, then, you know, because I don't. I, I, I see it as, as a First Amendment right, and if you get caught doing it, pal, uh, we got you. So back to the heroin. <sighs> it is important to highlight that uh, the, with, the, with these actions, the Secretary of the Navy, blah, 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 Tabasco sauce. Look at the, look at the map. This is interesting. So you see how the, the heroin comes in on the blue line, right? It comes in down here, I guess. Right? And I'm sorry, over here. <laughs> I'm looking. I got the cursor in the wrong spot. Right? It comes in from China. It hits the the west coast of Mexico, nobody really knows where, or in this case we do, Lazaro Cardanzas, the port of Ladazo. Rather than going in the, the, uh, through the Panama Canal, it hits Mexico in, in three potential spaces, also in Acapulco. So, and then it also comes in from Colombia in the other direction, but we're talking about Chinese fentanyl at this point. And then it somehow makes its way up through boats, through other ports of entry, other ways, other means to get it up to San Diego, Tijuana, uh, and other El Paso, other areas of weakness at the Mexican border. Build that wall. Build. Build the wall. It's starting to become increasingly clear how the global supply chain of fentanyl starts with manufacturing in China then ships shipped on container vessels to Mexico. The next step would be using Mexican cartels for the so-called last-mile delivery to the U.S. Ah, Mexico and China working together. So this is a fentanyl pipeline. is quite a, kind of an interesting theory on how the, how the fentanyl gets from, from China to the U.S. Is it warfare? Is it, uh, you know, I don't know. For, is China at war with us over fentanyl? Maybe. More than 80% of the drug is driven through the San Diego border. Wow, 80% before dispersing, dispersed throughout the U.S. By the time Mexican drug cartels get the fentanyl onto uh, American streets, it would be cut with a number of substances. Yeah, they cut it down. There was also no mention in the report if the seizure was the largest in Mexican history or how many millions of Americans uh, it could have killed. I, I could tell you that. I mean, just do the math. I mean, 60, 52,000 pounds. It's, it's millions, and it could kill, you know, it could wipe out the human population if everybody took a little. That's how many people it could kill. So, um, Marcus Conti report. Oh, there's another one here. That uh, interesting story, just another sidebar. 70% of Americans are now angry at the entrenched political establishment that is exerting control over every aspect of their lives. Really? 70%, right? And so how, does that, how does that affect the drug trade, right? Anyway, Marcus Conti reporting. So Purdue Farmer takes a plunge. They're in debt for $12 billion dollars. Right, they're going to pay three and turn over the company, and they're going to walk away with billions of dollars and live out their lives in the lap of luxury after killing a half a million people. Doesn't that make your blood boil? 
And anybody who got to, gets a bag of fentanyl from this China raid, right, this last China raid, and throws it over the fence is going to spend the rest of their life in a prison cell in Mexico eating rice and beans and cockroaches. If they give you rice and beans, mostly cockroaches and rats. Now, is, is this, are we living in a just world? Is this a just world, or, 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 or are we all fucking doomed, man? So, I don't know, man. I say make drugs legal. You know, I've always said that, that if you take the, the mystery out of it, you know, in a way that, I don't know, cut out Big Pharma, right? Big Pharma is like, you know, it's billions of dollars used to, to perpetrate this myth that because you have a leg pain or you have a, your neck hurts or your back hurts, you need this fentanyl. Uh, you need this, this uh, Oxycontin. You need our pills. You need our Oxycontin. You need our opiates. You need that fentanyl, man, because that's the shit that they're going to cut the heroin with, make the other designer drugs, and knock you out to desensitize you, to take you out of yourself. Ah, Marcus Conte reporting.